Hi, my name is Caroline Ashworth. I'm the Assistant Director of Audiovisual Preservation at the National Archives of Australia. World Audiovisual Heritage Day is about raising awareness of formats that are at risk of loss over the next few years. For us, it's also about taking stock of where we are at, what we have achieved over the past year and what our priorities are moving forward to ensure that we are on track to save our collection. Technical obsolescence is the biggest problem facing our AV archivists today. This means that the equipment designed to play back old video and audio tapes is no longer manufactured. Existing machines are getting harder to find and are often in terrible condition. Finding skilled engineers who know how to fix them is even harder. But the tapes themselves are also degrading. Some of these are over 50 or 60 years old. The materials and chemicals used to create magnetic media formats are breaking down. The only real solution to these problems is digitisation. We have over 1.4 million audiovisual items in the National Archives collection, and this figure is growing all the time. Over 300,000 of these are audio and video formats, and a further 270,000 are motion picture film and film sound. In order to preserve and digitise a collection of this size, we have to use multiple strategies in tandem. Firstly, we ensure that the formats are stored appropriately, the right combination of temperature and humidity. We all know that cold storage can extend the life of these formats by slowing down deterioration. Next, we focus on digitising the content to archival standards. We use a hybrid approach, meaning that we digitise all formats internally in our own facilities and at the same time we outsource in bulk to qualified commercial providers. This means we can increase the amount done in each year. We publish our preservation digitisation standards on our website. These are the file formats that we produce in-house and that we expect from our depositors and commercial providers to ensure archival quality and consistency for long-term preservation. With so much digitising happening, we also need to expand our digital storage all the time and ensure that our end-to-end -end preservation practice is sound and the data is appropriately archived. We have digitised over 80,000 audio and video items already, but this year we will begin a targeted four-year programme of digitisation in bulk continuing to focus on magnetic media recordings on audio and video formats, but also continuing our work digitising motion picture film. My advice, if you are wondering where to start with your own collection, is just simply to make a start. One of the most useful things you can do is to describe it. Listing what you have and what the formats are will enable you to start making a plan. With AV materials, it is important to recognise that there may be a relationship between the formats. You may have multiple copies of one recording or one recording spread across three tapes. Knowing this helps you to prioritise what needs digitisation and what doesn't. We publish lots of advice on our website, so I encourage you to go and have a look. And don't be afraid of audiovisual records because you think it's too technical. It's not that hard. Thanks so much for listening to me today. Now go and get started with your AV collection. The Catholic Diocese of Ballarat Archives maintains one of the most significant religious collections in the state of Victoria. Currently the archive is being organised to be moved. As part of this process, this collection is currently being assessed and packed. Created in 1874, the archives maintains over 100,000 objects, which not only includes personal records, documents and files pertaining to the Catholic religion, but also to bishops, priests, parishes, and as well as a library and religious objects. One of the most important collections in the archives, which not only captures the leading topics of discussion of the post-war period, includes the National Catholic Rural Movement Tape Library. This collection also includes the original tape recorders and hundreds of letters. Originally established by Bishop O'Collins, the tape collection was organised and controlled by Father Bob Markey, who was appointed as chaplain to the Royal Movement and as a result travelled throughout Victoria. 
Started in uh, 1954, this collection grew from a need and an opportunity to promote and support Catholics within regional Victoria. Father Markey was passionate about the fight against communism and excessive capitalism through the possible collectivisation of rural Victorian farms during the 1950s, 60s and 70s. Topics recorded include the common market, the wool industry, politics and religion, communism, nuclear policies, refugees and migration, as well as keynote uh, speakers by Christian leaders and social orders and many other areas of interest at this time. Father Markey hoped through recording such lectures and interviewing specific people who supported the values of the NCRM, he could highlight the need to protect smaller farms in regional Victoria from being merged into large private farming corporations. Over the last two years, some of the film collection has been converted into a digital format. However, the NRCM audio tapes have yet to be digitised. Many of the tapes are magnetic recordings, standard band tapes, VHS and cassette tapes, and because of this, the conservation and storage of this material may slightly vary. Currently, the tapes have been separated into type, cleaned and stored in A4 acid-free archive boxes. Some still remain in their original cardboard boxes or plastic or metal cases, whilst others are wrapped in acid-free paper. However, what will guide how we will be storing this film will be how combustible this material is under certain environmental circumstances. Because temperature and moisture are the two key factors affecting the rate of film deterioration and because we are unclear how the collection was stored before arriving to the archives, it is unclear how this material will survive before it starts to degrade. Therefore, where we locate these films in the Bishop's office is not only paramount for the, this collection, but also for the safety of the archives and the other departments which will also work in this new building. Because of this, certain questions need to be considered before relocation. Some of these include, what are the differences between acetate and nitrate film and are there differences with how we store these films? Can the collection be safely stored in the same storage area as other departments if the environmental conditions are appropriate? Can this collection be safely stored in the archives if the temperature is within a certain level and how often do we need to assess this material so it remains safe? These are just some of the questions which need to be answered prior to relocation. Hello, it's Andrew from Cam Smart in Canberra. Today we're going to look at a few different key factors when migrating magnetic media for audiovisual digitisation. One of the first key uh, factors is having engineering expertise to be able to maintain obsolete equipment. So obsolete, we've got obsolescence of equipment, but we've also got obsolescence of technical knowledge. We're lucky here that we've got in-house uh, expertise to be able to work on these machines. We've also got a large stockpile of spares, which are critical um, for the maintenance and the proper playback of uh, either audio or video magnetic media. Machines need to be properly aligned and calibrated to get optimum playback, but also so they don't damage the actual tape or they don't damage the machine itself. Another important factor when digitising is preparing the media and making sure the media is in an optimum state to get the best signal from it. So to do that, some media that's in poor condition like this needs to be um, applied with uh, conservation techniques like removal of mould. We also have machines for cleaning, uh, automatic cleaning, and in some instances where tapes might be suffering from hydrolysis, they might need baking in special environmental chambers such as this one uh, that Jonathan's just taken out, a pneumatic tape. Another factor um, when digitising large collections at scale uh, is the need for automation and the need for concurrent streams at once. These collections, because they are now obsolete, require the ability to get through them in a speedy time before it's too late. And robotics is one way to be able to speed up a collection. 
So this is concurrent streams as well that are running at once. This particular job that we've got going through, you can see is for ABC. Um, this is quite a large job with 71,000 videotapes and 10,000 audio tapes. Uh, this particular example is for AFL, and that's a, a collection of 20,000 videos. The EV is running through one inches and beta cams at the moment, and that's all digitization work there. In terms of audio, um, just as critical to get through as much as possible in a safe and controlled manner. Um, and Scott's running through concurrent streams, as you can see. So one factor when digitizing is obviously alignment and making sure that we're getting the best. Another way to determine that is to assess the files that are being created afterwards. We use a couple of different techniques. We use manual assessment, which is what Jonathan is using scopes to make sure that the files are legal and good. But we also use software to do automate, automated checks and balances. Happy World Day for Audiovisual Heritage. My name is Melissa Begg and I work as a news librarian for Channel 9 News. As you can see, I'm in my home office at the moment or corner of my bedroom. Unfortunately, I was planning to shoot this in the library, which we would have had a bit more to look at, but uh, I got a phone call a couple of weeks ago that due to the rising numbers in COVID cases in Melbourne, I've had to start working from home exclusively. Um, as a news librarian, we are con considered essential workers, but to cut down on the amount of people in the office and um, people coming into contact with each other, we've had to uh, change our, our working flow to suit the COVID restrictions. And I know that so many of us are going through that at, at the moment. I know for myself, this time around has been quite a challenge, especially when my three-year-old son is at home, but you know, we're all doing the best that we can. Uh, this deep into the COVID trials and tribulations, one good thing is that our workplace has sort of gotten quite good at getting a flow together. We have two people working in the office and or one or two people working in the office and they deal with the requests and searching for vision and restores. Um, so that's primarily their role in the office. And at home, we are shot listing, shot listing, shot listing. And also because there's so much COVID vision on the news at the moment, it's you know imperative that we make good choices in what vision we're going to keep, what's useful, and also how to catalog it. and how to describe it so that it's um, searchable and that it can be retrieved in the future because it's, there's just so much that is generic shots of um, people getting vaccinated and stuff like that. So we have to sort of figure out um, or we have to stick to the conventions of how to shot list that so that it's findable in the future. We have quite a large tape collection in the news library. It contains news stories dating back to the 1970s, personality tapes, major events, and then just generic vision from the streets of Melbourne on compile tapes. So obviously all of this vision is really important for us to digitise while the tapes can still be used. Typically we, when we ingest vision for a re request we would also digitise as much from that tape as possible as we do it all in-house. Uh, at the moment unfortunately with the COVID restrictions the digitisation is something that has definitely gone on the back burner. I guess it is quite hard to know what's going to happen from this point, uh, how we're going to be operating over the next 12 months, 18 months, even five years in a new COVID normal, whatever that entails. So if you do have any questions, you can always reach out to colleagues that are working in the sector. The National Film and Sound Archive are always there for advice. And there'll also be some uh, resources at the end of this video for more information. Just remember we are all in the same boat. We're all in this together. So always reach out.